Officials at Japan's meteorological agency have lifted a tsunami advisory for the country's east coast. They issued that advisory a few hours ago after a magnitude 7.1 earthquake struck off Fukushima Prefecture. Officials issued the tsunami advisory for five prefectures. They say a tsunami reached some cities just before 3 a.m. Japan time. A 40-centimeter wave reached a port in Iwate Prefecture and a port in Fukushima Prefecture. A 30-centimeter wave was observed in the city of Ishinomaki, Miyagi Prefecture. A 20-centimeter wave arrived in a port in the city of Ofunato in Iwate Prefecture. Officials say they lifted their tsunami advisory because sea level fluctuations became smaller. Tohoku Electric Power Company officials say they observed a 55-centimeter tsunami just after 3 a.m. Japan time in a port at the Onagawa nuclear plant in Miyagi Prefecture. The tsunami advisory has been lifted, but we think slight fluctuations in sea level will continue for about half a day. So we want people on or near the coast to exercise caution. Once again, officials at Japan's meteorological agency have lifted a tsunami advisory for the country's east coast. They issued that advisory a few hours ago after a magnitude 7.1 earthquake struck off Fukushima Prefecture. Now back to our breaking news story this hour here in RT. Live pictures from Japan now. The country now that has expanded its tsunami advisory to five prefectures after an earthquake struck off the coast near the crippled Fukushima nuclear power plant with a magnitude of around 7.3. Authorities say the waves are not expected to be higher than one meter, but TEPCO, the company that operates the plant, has ordered its workers to keep away from the seawall. More details to follow as soon as we get them here on RT. And this is a special report. Small tsunami reaches Japan after earthquake. A small tsunami triggered by a quake has hit Japan's eastern coast where the crippled Fukushima nuclear plant is located, but no damage is being reported. Uh, I think the official is 7.1 magnitude. Now on E&E News, uh, through the comment boards, people were actually watching the webcams and reported seeing smoke from the number 5 and number 6 reactor buildings. Uh, before the cameras went all fuzzy and crazy and they shined a great big bright light I will provide a link below to the one camera still uh, that we can find working uh, this story was posted on the 17th of October I do believe I reported it the removal of fuel from an undamaged reactor of unit number six of the Fukushima Daiichi plant began today after workers completed operations to remove the reactor pressure vessel lid and major components they are removing the fuel from number five and number six when this earthquake took place. Okay, we've had reports of smoke and fire on five and six, but of course TEPCO's telling us everything's under control. The tsunami wasn't that bad and there wasn't any real damage. I'll provide links below to all of this, of course. Uh, heads up. Time to keep your eyes out. Enjoy. Just how worried should the outside world be? about the latest radiation readings coming from the Fukushima nuclear plant. On Sunday, Tokyo Electric Power said it had taken a reading close to water storage tanks of 1,800 millisieverts an hour. That is 18 times higher than a reading taken at the same spot two weeks ago. But today in Tokyo, the head of Japan's nuclear watchdog said news reports that the radiation could kill a worker in just four hours were exaggerated. Mr. Tanaka also sought to assuage fears that the recent water leaks at the plant and the radiation spikes are a threat to the public. Supposing the figure of 1800 millisieverts per hour is correct, it is beta radiation so it does not penetrate through objects. So it has a totally different meaning from the case of gamma radiation. It will not penetrate as long as there's a 5 to 10 millimeter thick plastic shield or you wear leather shoes. It should be okay even if you stand on it for a while. But Japan's chief regulator also accused Tokyo Electric Power of careless management in handling the water leaks at the plant. 
Nearly half a million tons of highly radioactive water is now stored in hundreds of huge tanks at the plant. It's used to cool the damaged reactor cores. Mr. Tanaka said in the long run, the only option is to filter most of the radiation out of the water and then to dump it into the nearby Pacific Ocean. Rupert Wingfield Hayes, BBC News in Tokyo. An approaching storm is sending workers at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant into a race against time. They need to make space to collect rainwater tainted with radiation. The storage they have is almost full. NHK World's Chie Yamagishi has more. Workers at the plant have had their hands full dealing with rainwater. A typhoon blew by last week. That was followed by a heavy rainstorm. Forecasters say another storm could hit this weekend. The rain has filled barriers around storage tanks for contaminated water. On Sunday, workers discovered that rainwater had flowed over the barriers at several locations. Tests revealed that some of that water contained unsafe levels of radioactive strontium. There have been other problems. Earlier this month, workers mistakenly allowed 430 liters of highly contaminated water to escape outside the barriers. Some of it may have reached the ocean. On another occasion, workers pumped too much radioactive water into a small tank. Five tons overflowed. The possibility of more rain has the plant operators scrambling for a solution. Officials at Tokyo Electric Power Company have asked nuclear regulators to let them store water in underground pools. We've asked to be allowed to use the underground pools. We won't put highly tainted water into them. Managers plan to temporarily store rainwater in underground pools. They can hold nearly 9,000 tons of water. The pools consist of holes dug into the earth. They are lined with three waterproof sheets. In April, three of seven pools leaked. TEPCO stopped using all of them, but they've decided to fill pools that have not leaked before. With more rain on the way, company officials say they have no other choice. Regulators have given them the go-ahead. Chie Yamagishi, NHK World. Workers at Japan's crippled nuclear plant are also preparing for the storm. Some water that's accumulated on the Fukushima Daiichi site is exposed to the weather and may be radioactive. So crews are moving it to make sure it doesn't spill. Water has been collecting in barriers around storage tanks every time rain has fallen since the middle of last month. Water spilled over 11 barriers last Sunday. Workers checked it for radioactivity. They say the level of strontium in the spillage over six barriers exceeded the government's safety limit. Crews are transferring water to tanks that can hold 4,000 tons. They'll pump some of it into underground pools. The workers want to move the water as quickly as possible, so they've begun using extra equipment. They've added 19 pumps, which can transfer 60 tons an hour. And they're using 12 extra vehicles, including fire engines and tank trucks. Residents of an island south of Tokyo are getting out of the way of a severe tropical storm a week after they lost homes and neighbors to a typhoon. Authorities ordered about 1,200 people on Izuoshima to evacuate before the latest system hits. They had already advised everyone on the island to head to safer places. Last week, Typhoon Weepa set off landslides on Izuoshima that destroyed dozens of homes. It killed at least 31 people. Twelve others are still missing. Now authorities have turned their attention to the latest forecasts. They've asked the more than 8,000 residents on the island to move to somewhere safe before the next storm arrives. A seventh of the population has no choice and must leave their homes. Rain has fallen on the island throughout the week. Authorities fear they could see more landslides.